In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a CRT screen inside of After Effects and make your footage look like a damaged VHS tape. So I was heavily inspired by this video from Technology Connections, which is an amazing YouTube channel. And this video pretty much explains how a CRT display works. And watching that, I figured I could kind of replicate that inside After Effects. And that would be a quick and easy way to get a good CRT looking effect. And we could sneak in some nice VHS effects too. So we're going to start with two main comps. Right now we're in CRT effect main, and I'm going to delete all of these layers so we can start from scratch. And then we have another comp called footage. And in this comp, oh, I've just got a few layers, some type and a color gradient to just give a good example of our effect in use. And of course we can chuck any footage into this and apply the effect to it later. Now I've also got some reference that I'm gonna drag into our main comp. So this is what a CRT, a cathode ray tube, looks like when you get up close. Now these things which look a lot like pixels uh, aren't actually pixels, but they do a very similar job. They show the red, green, and blue values of a signal and they can be arranged in a variety of different ways. We're gonna follow this sort of offset grid here and these are called phosphor dots. So the first thing we're gonna do is kind of replicate these and make a big grid that kind of looks like this. Let's hide all this reference for now and we're gonna start creating that grid in a new comp. So my new comp, I'm gonna make it very small. 30 by 23 and you know I know that because I've made this before and I know that size works and I'm going to call that comp phosphor dots and inside this tiny comp I'm going to select my rounded rectangle tool and draw out a rounded rectangle I'm going to make sure the fill is set to red a very red red 100% red I'm going to keep that on the left and duplicate that to make a green one making sure that's 100% green which is 02550 and another that is 100% blue 00225 in your RGB values. And then I'm just going to align these and just make sure those are aligned to the middle and look like this. Now we're gonna make a big grid out of it. So we're gonna take this phosphor dots comp, drag it over the new comp icon to make a new comp with it. And we're gonna call this phosphor dots grid. And we're gonna edit this comp just a touch. I'm gonna to press command or control K to open up the composition settings. And we're gonna make this in 4K resolution. So that's 3840 by 2160. And our dots are going to be tiny in the very middle. But to our phosphor dots comp, we are going to add the effect CC Repertile, and we are going to extend it to the right all the way till it fills up the comp, extend it all the way to the left, all the way down, and all the way up. Now we can see we have this grid repeating. Now if we drag in our reference, we can see that they're not all aligned in a perfect grid. Every other row is offset slightly. Now there is a method we can do to shift these pretty quickly, but it is a little bit tricky and that is using a displacement map. So let's get rid of this reference. And the first thing we need to do is create a new solid by pressing control or command Y. I'm gonna make it white and just call it displacement map because we always label our layers. And because we want to offset every other row, we want to create a layer that is just a bunch of lines that covers every other row. So we're gonna use the effect Venetian blinds. Now Venetian blinds is kind of like a transition effect. If we change the transition completion to zero to 100, we can see it kind of just draws lines on our grid. So we want this at 50% and we want its direction at zero. So it's vertical. Now our comp was 30 pixels wide. So having a width of 60 in here should work because that is double our comp and at a 50% transition completion, it would cover one of our full phosphor dots. And we can see that, that width is about right. It is slightly offset. So we can just shift that with our arrow tools to cover just one row. There, that should align up and be consistent throughout the whole grid. Now we're gonna pre-comp this displacement map with the control shift C. Make sure we move all attributes to the new composition and hit okay. So now we've got one comp, which is just a bunch of white vertical lines and our phosphor dots, which has been expanded underneath. Now let's turn down the transparency of this displacement map a bit so we can see what's happening underneath, but still see the area that it is affecting. And on our phosphor dots comp, we're gonna add the effect Displacement map. Now, as soon as we add that, it's gonna go a little crazy in the middle. The first thing we need to do is set the displacement map layer from layer two to layer one, our displacement map. We wanna use for horizontal displacement off and change that to zero. And for vertical displacement, we want the alpha mat. And now we can see it's starting to look pretty close to what we want. So we just need to change the maximum displacement amount until it fits. And I think we're pretty close there. I think six will do. So now we can turn off our displacement map and now we've got a full grid of phosphor dots taking up our full 4K comp. So our big grid is done. Let's run our footage through this. 
let's first put all of these comps in our pre-comps folder and go back into our main comp. And we've still got our reference in here, so we could pretty much delete all of those. And we are going to drop in our footage and our phosphor dots grid on top of that. Now we want each of the color channels, the red, green, and blue from our footage layer to come through their respective phosphor dot and their respective phosphor dot only. So we want to isolate all the red values from the footage and only show that through the red dots in our grid. So we're gonna do that by separating the channels in our footage. And this is a very similar process to doing an RGB split, but a little bit different because of the way we're using these phosphor dots. So on our footage layer, let's add the effect shift channels. And we just want the red value. So you want to take the red from the red channel green from full off and blue from full off. So now this is showing only the red values in our footage layer. Then we want to add the effect set to matte and we want to take a matte from layer one, our phosphor dots grid. And we want to use for the matte, not the alpha channel, but the red channel there. Now we've isolated only the red channel from our footage comp and it's only coming through on the red areas of our phosphor dots grid. And at the moment it is kind of stretching our matte layer, our phosphor dots grid layer, because we haven't selected collapse transformation. So let's select that. Now you can see it's a bit bigger, accurate to the full 4K resolution of our original grid. Okay, now we need to do that for the green and blue channels. So let's duplicate our footage layer twice, pressing control command D. So now we have three total copies. On the top, the top one we want to keep red, the middle one we want green. So we want to take the red full off and take the green from green, but we want to use the matte from not the red channel, the green channel. So now we've got both red and green. And for the last one, blue, turn red off, take blue from blue and use the matte of the blue channel. And now you can see we have the full color spectrum. And if we zoom out pretty far, we can see all of our colors. We can see from black to white and we can see full spectrum of green, yellow, red, magenta, blue, cyan, and green. But when we zoom in close, we can see that's not really what's happening at all. The white areas are just green, blue, and red. And the other colors we're experiencing are just combinations of green and red or red and blue. And it gives the illusion of a full color display. And that's exactly how a CRT display works or RGB pixels for that matter. And we've essentially built this CRT display in just a few minutes inside of After Effects. And if you're finding this video useful, please give it a like. It really helps me grow the channel so that I can keep producing videos like this every week. And please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next ones. So now let's quickly rename and tidy up these layers because we deserve a tidy project file. Now we can also change the resolution of our phosphor grid as well. And we can do this by scaling up our phosphor grids dot layer. The first thing we need to do is make sure Collapse Transformations is selected on it. And as soon as we click on that, it scales back up to its 4K resolution. And we can scale it up even further if we want, as if we were looking really close at a CRT screen, or scale it down even further if you want to capture more detail. Now, you will run into a limit, of course, because our pre-comps are only 4K, but you could easily just go into that comp and scale up the comps to you know 8K if you wanted to. I think 50% works good for this effect, so I'll leave it there. Now let's take this to the next level with some effects. But first, a bit about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare, if you don't already know, is an online learning community with thousands and thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people to explore new skills or deepen existing passions. And when you join, you can now try one of Skillshare's new live classes where you can experience real-time inspiration as you connect with popular teachers while watching and working along with other members. Now, no matter what 2021 brings, you can spend it creating something meaningful with Skillshare's online classes. Just some of the amazing classes that I'm inspired by at the moment are Productivity for Creatives, Building a System that Brings Out Your Best by Thomas Frank. This class is an amazing look at how inspiration is more of a muscle and how you can strengthen that and Find Your Style, five exercises to unlock your creative identity with Andy J Pizza. These are both fantastic ways to unstick yourself from a creative rut or burnout and make sure you're having fun with your creative process. The smartest investment you can make is in yourself and in your education. And Skillshare might be the most cost-effective thing on the planet for that. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so you can explore your creativity. Now onto the effects. So we're going to do the effects into two parts. The first part will be adding damage and distortion to our footage comp to make it look a bit more like a VHS tape. We're essentially creating a bad signal in our footage comp to be projected through this CRT screen. So let's get into that footage comp and I'm going to create a new adjustment layer with control alt and Y or command option Y. And I'm going to call that layer distort. 
So the first thing I'm going to add is a wave warp effect. I'm going to change the direction to zero so that what it waves vertically. I'm going to change the wave speed to minus 0 0.5. So that wave is going downwards. Let's change the height to eight, make it a little bit smaller and the width much higher. Let's make this 800. Now that is a really subtle flowing wave effect. So let's change the wave type from sine to square. So now it has really harsh edges and we kind of get this slow screen refreshing rate, which you can get if your VHS is damaged enough. Now this does push our edges out a little bit on the side. To account for that, we can just add the effect transform and set the scale to 101%. And now it fills our screen again. Now we want to add a bit of a flicker, which we'll also get in the damaged VHS. So let's create that on another adjustment layer by pressing Control Alt Y, call that one flicker. And we want to add the curves effect. And in this, we just want to increase the brightness by moving the curves in this manner up towards the top left. That should do. And we want to create a flicker essentially by just turning down the opacity randomly. So let's open up the opacity. And what we kind of want to happen is this value to just change, you know, arbitrarily throughout the duration. So we can do that by adding a wiggle expression. So let's alter option, click the stopwatch and add the expression wiggle and then in parentheses, 12 comma 100. So that means 12 times a second, this value will randomly fluctuate up to a maximum of 100. So essentially this is going to turn on, off or anything in between 12 times a second. And that creates a nice random flickering effect across the whole composition. Now we want a bit more of some color distortion. So let's create a new solid with control plus Y. Let's make its color a blue. Hit OK. And I'm going to select the rectangle tool. I'm going to draw a quick mask around it. And I want to feather that mask about 500. So it's got a pretty nice gradient. And I want to make sure this extends across all sides. And we want this to go down to move down our comp. So let's move it above our comp. We want to open up its mask path, keyframe that. Let's keyframe that at the very start of the comp. And then over just a bit more than a second, let's click on it and drag it down the bottom. So now we have an animation of this soft gradient color bar scrolling down the screen. And I'm going to trim the end of this comp with Alt and the right square bracket. And then I'm going to duplicate that with Command D or Control D. I'm going to drag it over a bit further, add the fill effect, and change its color. Actually, this default red might be pretty good. Let's leave that at red. Actually, no, that's too saturated. Let's go a bit more dull there. So now we've got a blue line coming down, then a red line. And let's duplicate these both and fill up the rest of the comp with them. So now we've got a bunch of variation and damage inside this comp. And one last thing we're gonna do is on a new adjustment layer, again with Control Alt Y, adding a Gaussian blur and just adding a 10 pixel blur over everything. And that just softens everything we've done inside this comp. Now let's go back into the main comp there. Now this is looking pretty good. This is looking quite a lot like a damaged TV. There's blue and red masks sliding down might be a bit too intense. So let's go into our footage comp, select them all, open up transparency and let's just turn them all down to 50. So it's just a little bit more subtle there. That is looking a fair bit better. Now, this comp is looking pretty accurate to how a CRT screen would look in isolation, but it doesn't really represent what looking at a CRT screen would look like, if that makes sense. If we zoom in, it's still very clean. There is clear, distinct lines between the red, the green and the blue, and it doesn't really look like it's, you know, being put in any real scenario. This screen isn't living inside a physical world. And we're going to get closer to that by adding a few more effects to it. So on a new adjustment layer, the first thing we're going to add is a blur effect. And we're going to blur everything by five pixels. And already that just looks a little bit more distorted and we're getting these RGB values to kind of drift into one another. So we're getting a little bit more sort of cross pollination between the red, green and blue values and the illusion that they make up a white area is kind of a bit more believable. And that's essentially what we're going to do with the remainder of these effects. And the next one is to add a glow effect. And we're going to turn the threshold way up to 100 for this effect and the radius down to five. So this is a, a very subtle glow, but like always with making natural glows, it's best to do that in layers. So let's duplicate this glow and increase the radius from five to 10 and duplicate it again, and then increase the radius on this one to 30. So now this is just looking a bit more realistic, like an old screen. If we turn this on and off, we can see just how much more clean and digital it was before we added these effects. And now it's looking a bit more authentic. And one last thing we're going to do is add a curves effect over the top. 
and we're just going to increase the brightness on this as well there we are and you can tweak all of these effects if you think you'd like to make it less bright and the best thing about this effect is that it is all procedural now that this is all built we've built our own virtual tv inside after effects we can go into our footage comp and drag in any footage so i've got my youtube intro and as long as it is below the adjustment layers with the flicker, the distort, the blur and everything. Inside this comp, it plays a bit more like a damaged VHS version. And then we take a look in our main comp and now we've got a beautiful vintage YouTube intro circa 1993. And this project file is available to download for free down in the description so you can take a deeper dive and I would love to see how you apply these effects to your work. Please tag me with what you create and I'll see you in the next video. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.